Hey, yes, my friends, welcome back uh, to End Time Church. You are here where uh, we have the end in mind, and um, that's pretty exciting. Christopher Anderson, how are you, brother? Pretty good, Christopher Manti. How are you? Uh, too blessed to be stressed, uh, holding down the fort at, uh, on the wall or something. Too blessed uh, to be stressed. I, uh, I must be lacking some blessing tonight. I don't know. I think I stole that from Beyonce or one of the one of those awesome poets of the age. Yeah. Anyways, uh, this is that time, church. Well, welcome, folks. Um, Anderson and Manti are here right now. We're going to do communion tonight. It's going to be fantastical. Uh, we welcome you. We hope you are having an awesome day in Yeshua because he is the only way out of this mess. Amen. Uh, hi, Keith. Uh, we're doing awesome. Thank. Well, I am. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, Mr. Anderson is having some issues in the world. But that's all right. No it's issues. All good. No issues. Just, just excitement and uh, not being bored as I... Uh, ran into my local church folks this weekend and told me all these stories. I'm like, well, at least we're not bored, right? Yeah. Character right. development. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> right. So uh, we welcome you. We encourage you to say hello, especially if you're on our endtime.church official website. Uh, Chris has already posted in there somehow. He's got major talents. I don't even know how that is like Jedi reflexes or something. Uh, so uh, please say hello. If you're new, where you're from, um, what brought you here? Um, any prayer request or anything that you might have, please feel free to enunciate it um, here in the chat area, whether it's on our site or YouTube or Facebook or whatever. Or we have a prayer tab built in right to our live site that you can just click there and fill it out. Just have your name, address, or email address and, and how to contact you if you'd like to be contacted, etc. what country you're from and all that stuff. We'll get back to you. We'll pray for you. We'll pray with you, um, intercession, whatever. Uh, you got going on, or you just want to say hi and introduce yourself, please use that uh, for that purpose. The playlist button is also there, which has several, at least two months, three months worth of messages, uh, which has a lot of Book of Daniel on there um, recently, but that is that is cool. Uh, Signs and Wonders as well, uh, the cost of the cause of Christ, all these awesome things. Go check that out. And of course, there's a share button. We encourage you to share right now because sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. We like likes, we love loves, but sharing... It truly is caring because you're exposing folks who follow you to what we're doing. And that's the, honestly, that's the best, most economical, most loving thing we can do for uh, folks that we are part of or support or want people to hear about uh, is to just share it and say, Hey, look at that. You know, if then it's up to them, right? We can't do anything about it. We just let the Lord draw them in. So that's our, uh, how we operate here at End Time Church. And of course, we've got the Give Now button. We ask one simple request on that, and that is pray right now how much you should give. If we bless you as a ministry, if you get something out of this, if you use our app, if you use um, you know anything we offer, the teachings, etc., anything like that, just ask God how much you should give, and then he'll tell you, and then you do that. That's it. That's the deal. So use that button uh, tonight, please. If you wouldn't, we'll link to it for those who don't see the button. Uh, in a few minutes as well. Just so you all are aware, yes, the uh, app uh, is still freely available to you. And just go to the Apple App Store or Google Play. Get it for your wireless device, your phone, your tablet, or your computer. You don't even need a wireless device. It'll work right in your browser. It's a pretty awesome way to get around social media, honestly. Um, nobody owns it. It's no, you know, not some big corporation or big tech giant or whatever. It's End Time Church. That's who owns it and has the data. We don't share it. We don't do anything weird with it. We just uh, talk to each other and uh, do ministry um, as we were led. That's what it's for. So use us and fellowship all week long, not just tonight um, in that app. And uh, on that, it's not, it's free to you, but it's not free to bring to you. It's about halfway paid off, which is awesome. Um, is the update tonight on that. So we're halfway there. If you, the message on that is simple. If you have not given already, and many of you have, bless you, thank you. Those who have not, would you consider something like $10 or $20 uh, towards it to pay for it for the year? Because we are we do it on faith. We say, okay, here's the bill. We just pay it. And then we ask uh, for you to back that up. That's it. Uh, so if you're led to do that, please do that. I'll link uh, that direct payment link uh, to support the app as well. You'll also see how to sign up for text alerts and a telegram group that we have going on, etc. cetera. Okay, uh, I believe I am done. G- uh, Gene, hello, Gene from uh, North Carolina. 
Uh, LB from Florida. Prayer request. Yes, for her marriage. I believe it's a she. Uh, sorry if that's not the case. Um, absolutely. We will definitely do that. Um, Gene, definitely we'll be yeah. praying for your mother mm-hmm. who has melanoma, been diagnosed with that. We'll certainly be lifting her up in prayer uh, tonight even. Um, as well as your family who are looking after her and her things. I know that's a very hard place to be in uh, as a family. So, uh, you know, we'll definitely be lifting you guys all up tonight in prayer. Uh, Stephanie Harvey, blessings to you. And I guess it's good morning where you're at. Good morning awesome. to you. She, so, she's, she's in Australia, I believe, right? What I was thinking. Uh, an Aussie here in the house. Yes. Fantastic. Great to have you. Love it. Love it. Stephanie, Stephanie's been uh, on the tagging along with us for, for quite a few years, actually. So yeah, it's awesome. to have her. yeah it's awesome. Um, so, yeah, whatever you're from, wherever you're from and whenever it is in the day, uh, just say hello and we'll be be sure to uh, say hello back. And if, if, it's, if it's not live, if you're watching this later or tomorrow or next week or whatever, definitely still utilize that uh, form uh, on our site to reach out if you have any type of request uh, as far as prayer or whatever, uh, continue to use that. So anyway, we all, we're all about that, man, right? If we're not, if we're not seeking the Lord first uh, in, in communication at the throne in prayer, then what are we doing? I'm not sure what we're doing. We should get out of business, so to speak, right? I mean, we should not be engaging in anything uh, in ministry if we're not going to the Lord in prayer first and not only as a last resort. That's a big problem. Um, for me, anyways, right over the years, it seems like why don't we start here instead of ending there only. Anyway, let's do, we're going to do that. We're all about that, and tonight is a big uh, way we do that, which is communing with uh, the Father as Jesus showed us uh, how to do. So, um, Pastor Anderson, unless you have something else, now is the time. No, I think we're good. We definitely want to lift up uh, these prayer requests that have come in on YouTube. Um, Definitely want to make that happen. Uh, Keith, say, Pastor Anderson, you have camp in your church. Um, actually, there's a vacation Bible school about to start at my church uh, for the kids. I know both of my kids are involved with that. So, so there is youth camps. Uh, my ministry, I don't know if you may be referring to this, is called Boot Camp Ministries. Um, maybe that's uh, what you're referring to. Uh, I'll certainly love to clarify uh if you have any further questions about that um and big things for boot camp by the way yeah. uh, coming up in the next year or two big things big big, big ideas anyway big vision um big vision. Before, yeah we're going to start apostling uh home churches so if you know over the next year or two you know the lord's laid in your heart to become a home church leader and you're looking for um you're looking for somebody to help you with that or, you know, the world sometimes and, and definitely in ministry, if you like to see ordination, I'm, that's another aspect we're looking into is to begin to ordain people through boot camp ministries, um, you know, as that goes. So if that's something you might be interested in. Certainly keep us in mind. Th- that reminds me, uh, Pastor Anderson, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, the house churches, there are some obviously existing right now. Uh, and some are tied in with Entine Church, including Pastor Will Williams in Texas. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he's doing a phenomenal, he's been doing a phenomenal job. He has church in his home and he goes out to in public and spreads the gospel. He goes to Planned Parenthood and prays over the, you know, talks to women who walk in there. I mean, this look, dude is the real deal. Uh, him and his wife, Angela, uh, uh, are not, they've contacted COVID to be honest with you. Um, so they're not doing great right now. So pray for them if you would. Uh, but these are like, you know, the leaders that were, uh, excited to be seeing what the Lord is doing, working with them and assisting, coming alongside. However, we can uh, support them in their efforts. We we want to do and um, uh, any house church uh, leaders in situations like that. We are very interested in hearing from you. Um, anyway, so keep uh, the Williams uh, in prayer and uh, about maybe what is the Lord speaking to you about? You know, in your home or in a smaller group situation. Maybe you're either not in a church at all or. You've had an experience where you don't feel comfortable. Whatever the case, uh, reach out to Chris or myself or, or whomever, and we will we'll be happy to get with you. 
Yeah. And also, uh, you know, or on that subject, I certainly think it would be wise for us all to keep uh, Dr. Phil Lyle in our prayers. He's one of the elders here at church. Um, he's gone and, and helped so uh, house churches across the world, True. all over multiple countries. Um, so he knows all about this, but he uh, is certainly struggling going through some some hardships. Um, both, uh, medical hardships with his wife and just, uh, a lot of spiritual battle and mental struggling that, uh, that he's going through. So we certainly, as a church, as end time church, um, if you're a part of this, we certainly want to remember him in your prayers daily when you pray to lift up, uh, Phil and his wife, uh, Denise. Indeed, so, yes. yes, indeed. Remember Thank that you. as well. Yes, indeed. And by the way, since we're doing communion tonight, we want to make sure we have our own elements, okay? Fruit of the vine, well, however that works for you. There you go. Is that a graham cracker? That's an unleavened bread. Uh, forgive that me, brother. That to be graham cracker in flavor. Uh, I'm sure this is not kosher, but I did have half of a hot dog bun. What? Uh, le- yeah. You got yeah. leaven in there. Half of, there. There's some potato yeast or something. Uh, but I th- the Lord will, will take care of that beforehand. He knows my heart and the fact that I don't have any uh, unleavened bread in that house today anyway use what you got is the point okay uh, we're gonna we're gonna take communion together as a body as a family so um it's gonna be awesome and uh that's that right yes all right let's let's worship the lord let's go to the throne and then we'll be back to pray this thing in and then uh do the communion all right be right back for
out of the silence, the roaring lions, death is a grave, is no claim for me, and the moon rings, the seed of the promise,
Father, we come to you in prayer now. We ask that you anoint these services. We ask that you anoint Taryn for um, her awesome gift to you. We we pray it is acceptable to you. We um, offer even our own bodies as a living sacrifice, Lord, but we know uh, we can never compare to what you've done and the grace that you've poured out uh, on that cross. So as we remember and participate in your command to do this uh, until you return, and we ask that you anoint this time, anoint us around the world, and unite us as one body, indeed as one family, under your leadership. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for being who you are and for what you do and for never changing. In the name of Yeshua, the Son, we ask. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, hey, guys, tonight we're not going to get too terribly Long, So if you're looking for something that is going to dive into great depths and get into the weeds, it's really not the purpose of tonight's message. Tonight we're going to be looking at communion, right? I know many of us hear sermons and hear messages on communion, maybe once a month or, you know, however often, once every three months that you might do it at your local gathering. Uh, and let me reiterate, we do want you to be attending a local church. Because uh, there's certain things that we just can't do for you here in a digital format that you can only get at a brick and mortar church. So we certainly encourage that. But tonight we're not going to get into the weeds too deep. But before we get started, I really just want to go ahead and pray for these prayer requests that have come through specifically in YouTube tonight. Uh, there's two of them here that I'm seeing that I, I really just want to just pray over tonight. So the first one, we're going to... Pray over LB. Her name is Laura Baker. We're going to be praying over this particular request for her marriage tonight. Uh, so if you would, wherever you're at, join me in prayer. So, Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we lift up Laura and her marriage, God. Laura, all the way from Florida and the U.S. of A., God, we lift up her marriage, Lord. Whatever that issue is, God, whatever that she's dealing with, whatever that struggle may be that she is facing, God, today. Father, I ask, God, that you would provide a way, God, that you would soften hearts, Lord, where hearts may be hardened, God. Lord, that her and her husband, whatever the situation may be, God, that they would see 
any faults in themselves, God, if there is a fault in themselves, Lord, and that they would humble themselves before you first and foremost, but then before each other, God. Lord, I ask, Father, right now for a freshness and a newness in their marriage, God, as they work through whatever struggles and difficulties they may be going through at this moment, God, that you would breathe a new life into their marriage. Lord God, we know that you honor the covenant of marriage and that we even today, God, we see, you know, the example you gave of, you know, husbands honoring their wives as you, Jesus, honor the church, God. And provide for the church, God, and that model of marriage, God, that we see between you, Yeshua, and in your body, the church. And so, God, we I ask God this moment, Father, that even now in, in Laura's marriage, that that reality would begin to be breathed and flow into their marriage, God. And I ask, Father, that even within the next week, Lord, that she would begin to see differences and changes, God, for the good. Father, if there's any hindrance or any block in that marriage, God, is there anything taking their attention away from one another? Lord, I, I speak and I command that to be broke in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I also are going to pray tonight. We're going to lift up Jean and her mother and her family. So, Lord, right now, I ask God that you would bring peace and comfort to Janine's mother, to her mind, to what's going on uh, tonight with this issue, with this diagnosis of melanoma. Father, I can't even imagine really the, the heartache that she's going through. And some of us here might be able to understand that tonight, God. But Lord, I just ask God for just peace, God, peace that surpasses all understanding to begin to flow into Janine's mother in this moment, God. Lord, I ask for strength, God, for her family and herself as well, God, that as they continue to go through this, as they continue to, to battle side by side with uh, their mother, God, that they too would be given peace of mind, Lord. Lord, I ask, God, that though this difficulty is there, that this would be used to draw the family closer together, to knit them and join them together, God, even more so than, than any time in the past. And I thank you, Lord, that you are pouring out, even in this moment, your shalom that passes all understanding over her family. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. All right, so tonight, we're just going to go ahead and get into Scripture. So if you have your Bibles with you tonight, and I pray that you do, I would ask that you would turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 26, and we're going to read verse 26 through 29. And what we're going to do tonight, we're going to look at three different gospel accounts of the Passover meal, the Passover Seder, that Jesus was celebrating with the disciples, in which he instituted what we call today the Lord's Supper. And we're going to start in the book of Matthew, then we're going to go to the book of Luke and the book of Mark. So Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 through 29. And here's what the word of God says. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And then he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to them saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remissions of sin. Tonight, that many is you and me and all who would come to faith in Jesus Christ. Continuing, he says, but I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink of it anew with you in my father's kingdom. Now, if we go and reread the exact same account in the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 15 through 20, and the word of God says this. It says, then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and he gave thanks and said, take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. And then finally, we come to the book of Mark, chapter 14, verses 22 through 25. The word of God says this, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it. And he gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body. And then he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank from it. And he said to them, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. Assuredly, I say to you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. So the communion has a couple of different things that we're going to look at tonight. And again, we're not getting into the weeds, so I'm only going to talk about two specific things, even though there's probably about 15 different things that I could talk on tonight. For the sake of time and honoring your time tonight, we're only going to talk about two. So the first that I want to look at is that communion is a remembrance of Christ. It is a celebration of Christ in the fulfillment of the Passover. So we can break down the Passover Seder and we can break down and show the different cups of the Passover Seder, the wine and what each cup represents. And we can make a general broad assumption of what cup Yeshua specifically took and gave thanks, saying, this is my blood shed for you and give to the disciples to drink. We can make an assumption on that and probably be pretty accurate with it. But we're not going to talk about assumption tonight. We're not here to make assumptions or opinions based on popular ideas or even things that make sense. We're here to go into the word of God tonight and show you what it says. And so Jesus in multiple points says, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you take a communion, do it in remembrance of me. Every time you have this dinner, this meal, do this in remembrance of me. And so if we know anything about the Passover Seder, what that is, what the meal is, there's many different type of symbolism that are associated with that meal. But what we're trying to get at at this point is that it is a meal that was done once a year. So when Yeshua sat down with his disciples to have this Passover Seder, this was a once a year event. And he's saying basically at this point, every year that you have this Seder, and you take of this particular cup, and you break this particular bread, do it in remembrance of me. Remember that I am the fulfillment of Passover, that I am your Passover lamb, that I am the lamb that takes away the sins of the world, that my body was broken for you, that my blood was shed for the remission of your sins and your iniquities. That's what Jesus was saying. And so as we take communion this day, as goyim, as Gentiles, those of us who are grafted into the body of Christ, we do it in remembrance. Now, most churches, most congregations, they have different times that they take communion. As I mentioned at the opening of this, some of you might take communion once every quarter or once every three months at your at your home church. Some of you might do it monthly. I know the church that I attend, we do it at the beginning of every month. Yesterday was our our, our communion uh, service that we had. Basically, we're taking five to ten extra minutes in the, in the sermon towards the end, and we are celebrating the Lord's Supper together. Here at End Time Church, it's always been a goal of mine particularly uh, to have a Passover celebration, or I'm sorry, a communion celebration. Once a month, I think it's very important for us to remember the sacrifice of Christ, to remember his blood that was shed for the remission of my sin and your sin, to remember his body that was broken and beaten and hung on the cross for you and me, to remember that he is our Passover lamb. It's very important. And so I've always had the goal to do that monthly here. I can honestly say we haven't been very faithful at that in all uh, occasions, and it's it's passed on a time or two without it, and I certainly apologize about that. We certainly want to get in the habit of doing this a little more. But 
communion is a celebration of the remembrance of Christ as our Passover and what he did. And the second thing I want to look at tonight is that Passover, I'm sorry, I keep saying Passover, forgive me here, the, the, the whole Hebraic mindset here I got sometimes uh, takes over. But the, the celebration of communion is the institution or the initiation of the new covenant. It's the sealing of the new covenant. So what is the new covenant? If we turn to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 31 through 34. Before we get there, I just want to go ahead and pop this up really quick. Oh, I guess I can. It got blocked, unfortunately. Somebody say I'm a bunch of crazies because we're talking about communion tonight. That's awesome. We are not crazies. We are celebrating an ordained event in Scripture, a sacrament. So we will carry on with that. We turn to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 31 through 34. We see what this new covenant is. And I'm just going to leave that for you to go and read. I'm just going to break down a couple of bullet points that we find within the new covenant that God is saying regarding the new covenant. And then we're going to look at a couple of fulfillments in the new covenant as well in the Gospels. So the new covenant, which Jesus references when he's talking to his disciples during the Passover meal, would have had an automatic connection in the minds of the disciples as Jewish men to what Jeremiah was saying. Because it's very clear, God himself says, I will I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. The terminology new covenant was specifically mentioned there in Jeremiah chapter 31. And so when Jesus says, this is the cup of the new covenant, they would have automatically known about the scripture in Jeremiah 31 through 34. And so a couple of points that God makes regarding what this new covenant looks like. First, God says he will put his laws or his statutes or his Torah or his righteousness in the hearts. He will write it on their in their minds and write it on their hearts of those who are in this new covenant. He's specifically talking about the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Now, you may say, Pastor Anderson, we're not a part of the house of Israel. I would say that is incorrect because scripture tells us, Paul tells us that we have been grafted into the commonwealth of Israel. And so as Gentiles grafted into the commonwealth of Israel, the new covenant, therefore, is for us as well. And so when God says that he will put his laws in the minds of Israel and Judah, and write them on the hearts of Israel and Judah, that in turn includes those of us who are goyim or Gentiles that are grafted into the commonwealth of Israel. In other words, it's for you and me if we're born again. If we're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, then that includes us. In John chapter 4, verse 23, when Jesus was there with the woman at the well, he said, and she was talking about worship. He said that those, there will be those who will worship God, not at, not on the mountain, not on, not at the temple, but they will worship him in spirit and in truth. And we see a connection here in John chapter four, verse 23 with the new covenant that God speaks in Jeremiah chapter 31. God further says that I will be their God and they will be my people. In John chapter 10, verse 14 through 16, Jesus, as the true shepherd said, my sheep know my voice and the stranger they won't follow. This whole chapter 14, I'm sorry, chapter 10 in the book of John has a lot of connotation of Jesus as the true shepherd and us as the sheep of his pasture. That we have been given to him. There's further scripture as well that that Jesus said that those whom God has given, no man can snatch out of his hand. And so in this way that we have become gods, 
and God's people, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. I don't want people to freak out there. In this way, we become God's people, and he becomes our God when we are in Christ Jesus. And he becomes our shepherd, and we are his sheep of his pasture. We see as well that God says, basically, there's going to be a universal knowledge of the Lord. He said, no, no longer will you go to your neighbor to say, no, the Lord, for you will all know me. John chapter 14, verse 9, Jesus is saying that if you have seen me, you've seen the Father. And when we go to Christ and when we know Jesus, then we know God. And so in Christ Jesus, we can know the Father. Today, Christianity is one of the largest monotheistic religions in the world. It is not the largest. I'm not quite sure if it's still at about 2.7 billion confessing Christians around the world of all different uh, doctrinal backgrounds. I can't remember if it's 2.5 or 2.7 billion, uh, but it's up there. And so we even see that the knowledge of God within that representation, the 2.7 billion that people know of the Lord, that doesn't mean they actually follow him, but they know of him. And even outside of Christianity and though those 2.7 or 2.5 billion people know of Jesus Christ. Whether they follow him or not is a different story. And then we also said, we see that God says a part of the new covenant that their iniquity and sins, God will remember no more. He will forgive them. And so there's forgiveness of sin for all time. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12 we see that the sacrifice of Yeshua was made for all of us, for all who believe that sacrifice for sin that Yeshua made of himself, of his body and his blood on the cross, that that was for you and that was for me. You see, even the old covenant time when the book of Jeremiah, there was yearly sacrifices. There was multiple types of sacrifices that took place. But in the book of Hebrews, we see that those sacrifices were simply a yearly reminder of sin. That it couldn't permanently remove sin. It simply camouflaged it. But Jesus did away with sin. When he died on the cross and he became our sin sacrifice, when he became our Passover lamb, that all of those who place their faith in him, their sins are remembered no more. The Bible says that their sins have been cast as far as the east is from the west. So I ask you today, have you placed your trust and your faith in Jesus Christ? Have you placed your trust and your hope in his sacrifice as your own? Are your sins cast as far as the east is from the west? And so we also see that communion is considered a Christian sacrament. That's a little word. Sometimes people get scared of those Christianese or these religious words, words like sacrament, but they actually have meaning. And so what is a sacrament? A sacrament by itself is a rite, uh, a, a R-I-T-E, not R-I-G-H-T. It's a rite recognizing a particularly important or significant event. In the case that we're talking about tonight, it is communion, which often is called the Eucharist as well. The different terminologies that we can use for that. But that sacrament becomes a visible, tangible symbol of the reality of God or the reality of a particular work of God. A sacrament is therefore symbolic. Thus, the bread and the wine, or in my case, the graham cracker and the delicious Welch's grape juice is symbolic of the body of Christ. The blood of Christ. I use the graham cracker because I like them, but they also have holes that you can see here, which to me reminds me of the piercings in the hands and the feet in the side of our Messiah and the piercing in his forehead, his brow from the crown of thorns. We see the stripes here that reminds me of the whipping that he took, the beating he took at the post that not only paid for my salvation, but paid for my healing. I see the, the, the grape juice in my opinion, and for me, some of you might have wine representing the blood of Christ that was shed for me. The crushing of grapes is what produces wine. 
And so those things, for me, and they should be for you as well, are symbolic of a reality of God in my life. I can't see and feel salvation. Not while I'm in this mortal plane. I can't touch it with my hands or see it with my eyes. It is a thing of faith. But when I see the bread, the graham cracker for me, I see the symbolism of the body. And I see the symbolism of the blood. But there is also another term that we see on, in certain circles called a means of grace, that these sacraments are a means of grace. And now let me go ahead and try to let you in on what that means, because I know some people tonight might be looking at that and losing their minds. But a means of grace does not mean that by taking communion, I have some sort of additional grace added to my life. That is incorrect. A means of grace, when we look at it in the Wesleyan understanding, and even any other type of understanding you might have, is that we we look at this, and in the process of remembering the Lord Jesus Christ, the body that was broken and the blood that was shed, we have an awareness, a greater awareness in our lives individually for what he did for us. I reflect For example, on the sins that I have been forgiven for when I take communion. And I experience a reality of the grace of God in my life. A grace that is new every morning. A grace that is sufficient in my weakness. I remember God's grace. And so as a quote-unquote means of grace, it is simply a, a deeper understanding through the participation in a sacrament of the grace of God active in my life as a believer. And so tonight, every one of us here, I hope, is born again by confessing Jesus with your mouth and believing on him in your heart that he is the Lord Jesus Christ. And so every one of us have things that we can look back on and reflect on in our life as we prepare to take this communion together. We have something that we can look back on and say, thank you, God, that your grace was sufficient, that I am saved by grace through faith in your son, Jesus Christ, and that my sins have been forgiven. And you can think of those things. You know, we don't think on our past sins as a way to dwell on those things. No, we think on the the things of the past, the sins of the past, to understand the depths of God's grace in our lives. And that's why, personally, not every pastor does this, but personally, I like us to think for a moment about what God has forgiven us for, to make us grateful for the salvific work of Christ. So who can take communion? This is something that is, it's kind of important. This is something that's not talked about much. Who can take communion? Now, if communion is a, as a symbol of the salvific work of Christ, a symbol of his body and his blood, and if communion is also at the point that the new covenant was initiated in our lives, and if confession with our mouth and belief in our heart is what qualifies us for the new birth, then it goes to show that those who are born again, who are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, not of works, but grace and faith, then it goes to show that those are the ones who can participate in communion. Now, there's some extra biblical literature. It's actually, I think, a good guide more than anything. It's called the Dodache, the Apostles. And basically, what this is is a it is looking at writings from the Apostles during their time when they were leading the church uh, regarding the standards of behavior for Christians, specifically for those like you and me who are goyim, who are Gentiles that have come to the faith. It's actually a really good reading for anyone that is a a student of church history. 
But one of the particulars in here, in the ninth chapter, verse 5, gives us what the disciples themselves, after the resurrection of Christ, taught to the churches and to, to the various people, the fathers of the faith. They said this, and they said, let no, let none eat or drink of the Eucharist. The Eucharist, again, the, the bread and the wine, but such as have been baptized in the name of the Lord. For of a truth, the Lord hath said concerning this, give not that which is holy unto dogs. And so we see that the Eucharist and the communion that took place was viewed in the, the, the earliest church, the earliest manuscripts of the church in how, how we participate in things. We see it as maybe not as holy as they did then, but they see it as holy. Equitan, I, I assure you, we are about to start communion. This is the teaching portion beforehand, so uh, we will certainly get to that. So stand by. Give me a couple more minutes, please. And so tonight, as we prepare to take communion, I would ask if you are not born again, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, do not take this with us. And as we prepare to take this, let's do this in a worthy manner. Let's not do it hastily. Let's not do this in an unholy mindset. Let's not do this with division. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 34, an unworthy manner that Paul pointed out was people were doing this to get drunk on the wine and they were overeating. And they weren't remembering Christ. This is a holy thing, a holy moment. And so we must do this, one, as those who are born again, and two, with a recognition of the sanctity of this moment. And so tonight, we're going to take the bread. I'm just going to bless this. Take this bread wherever you're at. I'm just going to bless this. So, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, as we take of the bread tonight, Lord, help us to always remember your son, Jesus, the Messiah of the world, that his body was broken and pierced for us. So tonight... Go ahead and break the bread and let's eat together in remembrance of Christ Jesus. Take and eat. And Jesus, at the supper, at the Passover meal, he took the cup, the cup of wine, and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. This is my blood. This blood is shed for you, for the remission of your sins. And so tonight, as we take the cup, Let's take a moment to reflect on the sins in our lives that have been forgiven. And let's remember Jesus shed his blood for each of us. Take and drink. So, Father, as we conclude... Tonight's communion service. Lord, I ask that you would just go with each and every one that is watching here tonight, God. That you would be with them. That you would stir in their hearts, God. Stir in their minds throughout this week what you've done for them. Lord, I pray if there's anyone here watching tonight that does not know you as their Lord and Savior, God. That they would come to an understanding that they need you. 
And they would come to faith in you, Jesus. We thank you. And tonight, if anyone here doesn't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you want to experience the joy of salvation, you want to experience this incredible life that we have. It's not easy. It's not a rose garden. But we have salvation. If you want to experience that, and you want to experience heaven one day, just pray this with me. Say, Father, God, I'm a sinner. I am in need of a Savior. I confess my sins to you. And I ask you, Lord, to forgive me. I believe in Jesus as your only begotten son. That he died on the cross to be my sin sacrifice. That he is my Passover lamb. And I will be his disciple from this day forward. Holy Spirit, come into my life. Change me. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name. If you've prayed that with me tonight and you truly mean it, it's not just words, if you truly mean it, we want to disciple you. We want to come alongside you. We want to help you on this faith journey. Send us a message. We'd love to hear from you. But until next week, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And remember, Jesus is the reason we do all this. It's all about Jesus Christ and him crucified. Take care. God bless. Good night. 